Welcome, Gun Runner. Hello, everybody. Retro Lad here. And I am at the Retro Computer Museum in Leicester, who have been kind enough to let me do some filming here and let me show you some of the, the lovely things that they have. You might remember I've, I've done some filming here before when I showed you the, the Jaguar VR helmet and um, I also did a video of the ill-fated CD add-on for the Amiga 12000. So I'm doing some, uh, some other stuff here this weekend and rooting through them, vending machines and their archives to pick out some uh, gorgeous little oddities for you. And uh, here's something that caught my eye um, straight away this, this time around as an Atari fan. And as you can probably see, what we actually have is an Atari 260 ST. So, what is a 260 ST? Well, originally when uh, Atari were going to launch the ST, they, con they conceived several models which originally going to be, there was going to be a, a 130 ST, like there's a 130 XC, which is 128K of memory. They quickly abandoned that when they realized that 128K of memory was going to be nowhere near enough for a 16-bit machine with a complex a GUI and operating system. So the next model up was going to be the 260 ST, which is what you can see here, which would have had 256K of memory. Then we would have had the 520 with 512 and the 1040 like at the back with um, one megabyte. Now the 260 ST, uh, they soon realized that that was a really bad idea as well because the, these early STs didn't have the TOS um, operating system on the ROM. So you had to load it in from disk. When you loaded that operating system in from disk, you used up all the memory. So obviously 256K was completely impractical and uh, couldn't be used. But the problem was that good old Atari and their infinite wisdom had already built a load of these 260 STs um, ready for the market. So what they did was they all went to Europe. Um, mostly, actually, it seems a lot of them were found in, in, in Germany and the Netherlands rather than the UK. But they're misleading because although they are badged 260 STs, um, I believe all the ones that have been you know, discovered all have 512k RAM standard. So they, they, it's literally just um, a badging that's wrong. And I would never understand why they didn't just rebadge them. Because I would have thought it was fairly easy to take a badge off and, and stick a new one on saying 520ST. But I suppose that shows how cheap Atari were. They didn't want to spend more money. They just put them out there anyway, um, but still gave them 512k of RAM. And obviously the main differences uh, between these early models, the, the early models of the 520ST also came in this design, this exactly same design. And you'll see there are quite a few differences. Now, the first thing you'll, you would have seen as soon as this video started is the difference in the size. And I'll put that back for a moment there. So the ST that we all know and love is much, much taller. And uh, it's pretty easy to work out why. Because first of all, there we have our, our lovely built-in floppy disk drive. And we no longer have that. Because the, the, uh, the, the early models of the ST used uh, an external floppy disk drive, which you had to plug in. Um, a single-sided one at that as well. Uh, that did mean there was a big gap on the side here. So what you have here instead is the joystick ports. So none of that horrible um, reaching underneath to plug the, the joystick and mouse in. You'll see there's nothing there. It's just a flat, straight case. Uh, so it's, in a way, um, this model has a distinct advantage of having the joystick and mouse ports on the side and not underneath where they were absolute bitch to get to. Um, that was uh, definitely the worst part of the, the, the ST design was, was doing that. And, and apart from that, I mean, we've got everything um, on that you'd hide in the ST. It's just this slight different places because another difference is, when we go to the other side is, you might have already noticed this, but the MIDI ports aren't on the side. The cartridge slot is, but the MIDI ports aren't. The MIDI ports which are on the side of the other STs, the later models are now on the back here. So the MIDI in out of there, with a cartridge slot on the side, but all the rest of the ports are the same. But you will also notice no TV modulator because we didn't get a TV modulator on the ST until the STM came in. Uh, the M stood for modulator, and then obviously we had the STFM, which stood for floppy and moderator. So that was when they added the floppy drive as well as a TV monitor. But uh, I thought it would be interesting to show you the difference between these models 
um, the smaller one to the, to the more well-known larger model um, especially all you ST fans um, I thought would, would probably get a kick out of it um, apart from that there's, there's not really any other differences uh, there, there was a uh, the, the operating system was slightly different on the, the on the 260s uh, so there is that they they had a um, uh, an earlier version of TOS, as I said, early versions on disc. Later, later on, they, they did um, put them on a chip, but I believe you can actually uh, get the TOS on a chip and put it into into these these models as well if you wanted to. Um, and obviously, in, in the ST, it's very easy to upgrade the operating system actually to something else if you do want to upgrade the TOS to a more recent version. And um, that's about all there is all there is to tell you really. Um, I thought you would like to see. The difference between the original ST and the later model. Um, I hope you enjoyed this, this this short mini video. Thank you for watching. I'll see you all again soon. Bye bye.